In today's tutorial, we're going to be dealing with this particular animation. We're going to go through multiple techniques that can be used in various other animations as well. So be sure to watch till the end and let's begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows and click and drag to create a new window and we're going to change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we're going to press this plus button to add in a new geometry node tree and then we're going to select the group input and press X to delete the cube as usual. Now what we want to do is instance a bunch of cubes onto different points of a pentagon. So to create a pentagon, we can press Shift A and search for a curved circle node and then just plug this curve into the group output to create the circle. But right now it has 32 vertices which creates a fairly smooth circle but we want only 5 so we reduce the resolution down to 5 to create the pentagon. We also want it to be standing up so we can search for a transform geometry node and then just plug that in right here and rotate it about the y-axis by 90 degrees to get a vertical pentagon just like this. Now on each of the points of this pentagon that's over here, here, and all of these regions, we want to instance cubes. So we don't have to distribute points on faces or anything like that. And we can directly search for an instance on points node and plug that in right here. Now, of course, we need the actual instance. So we'll press shift A and search for the cube and simply plug the mesh into the instance socket of the instance on points. Now, each of the cubes are oriented straight forward, but we want them to be oriented according to the position that they're placed in. So to see that better, we can just search for a joint geometry node, plug that in right before the group output and plug the curved circle that has been transformed into the joint geometry as well that we can actually see the points of the pentagon. To see it better we can just switch on x-ray mode by pressing this button. Now at the point present over here we want the cube to actually be rotated like this and the point over here we want the cube to be rotated like this and so on. But the problem is normally we would have just aligned it to the normals but the normals occur only for straight faces. So for this particular line we'd have a normal vector pointing like this. For this line we'd have a normal vector pointing like this and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the junction of two points, as you can see over here, the normal does not actually exist this exact point. And that's because the normal till this point is facing like this and the normal till this point is facing like this. So at the junction, there's actually a limit and we can't actually figure out the normal. So instead, what we can do is we can align the orientations directly to the vector of the position of this point. Because if we take the position of this point, we get a vector that's aligned like this. If we take the position of this point, we get a vector that's aligned like this and so on for each of the five points that are present in this particular pentagon. And the thing is that normally a normal vector has a length value of one and these position vectors would not be unit vectors. That means their length would not have to be necessarily one. They could be much larger than one as well. But that doesn't really bother us. So we can go ahead and just use the position vectors itself to align these cubes. The way we're going to deal with that is by first sampling the actual position of each of these points. So we can press shift A and search for a sample index node and just take this value from the transform geometry and plug it into the geometry. Now we want the position and the position is a vector. So we have to change this from float to vector and we want it from every single one of the points. For the value, we want the position. So we can press shift A and search for a position node. And for the index value, we want it for every single index. So we can just search for an index node and plug that in as well to iterate through every single point in the pentagon. Now the actual value has to be plugged into the rotation, but we can't plug it in directly. Directly, we first have to align it to the vector so we can search for an align Euler to vector node and just plug the value into the vector and plug the rotation into the rotation. Now if the rotation isn't proper just play around with the different axes till you get the right rotation. In my case y and z works but it's actually supposed to be z so we're going to keep it at z itself. Next up we want these instances to be scaled on the x-axis so we'll go ahead and just increase the x-axis scale to something like 10 and that should be all right. Next we can switch off transparency by toggling this button again and furthermore there's a little bit of overlap occurring so I'll just decrease the y and z values by a little bit just so that there's no overlap. Maybe a little overlap is fine so I'll go with the value of 0.9. Now we can take these a bit further to the side and actually start deleting geometry. The first thing is that we don't want the faces of these cubes to be present. That means this front face as well as the back face over here. To do that we can play around with the cube itself and just delete a little bit of the geometry. We can press shift a and search for a delete geometry node and plug that in here. But we don't want to delete points, we want to delete faces and we don't want everything connected to the face to get deleted, that is the edges as well. We want only the faces to get deleted, so we'll switch it to only faces. Now we don't want every single one of the faces to get deleted, we want only this front face and the back face to get deleted, so we have to select them somehow. And one way that I figured out that we could select just them is by searching for an index node because every face has a unique index and comparing it with a specific value. So we'll press shift A and search for a compare node and we'll switch it from float to integer because indices are always whole numbers so we'll plug the index value in 
here and plug this result into the selection. Now we don't want it to be greater than but we wanted to see if it's equal and that way only that particular face at that index will be deleted. So this face corresponds to index 0. If we increase it to index 1 we get a different face that's deleted and that is these top faces over here. Now if we change it to index 1 we get a different face 2, 3 and as you can see index number 4 is deleting the front faces which is exactly what we want. Now we also need to delete the back faces so to do that we have to take this equal to node press shift D to duplicate it and then connect the index into the first socket and to just make sure that we're selecting the right index we'll first connect the result to the selection and think about connecting it later. Next we'll just play through the index values to see where the back face gets selected and we can see at an index value of 5 back face does get deleted which is exactly what we want. Now we want both index value of 4 and index value of 5 to get deleted and since the output is boolean we have to use boolean math so we can press shift and search for a boolean math node and we need to switch this from and to or. The reason why we're using or is because we want this to get deleted plus we also want this to get deleted and the operation for plus in boolean math is an or operation so we can plug this in as well as this in here and take the output plug it into the selection. This way we have both the faces deleted on either side and we can move on to the next part of the tutorial which is deleting certain regions of these cubes. So to delete them we're going to have to search for another delete geometry node but before that we want to actually split up these faces into many smaller faces. We can search for a subdivide mesh node and plug that in. Actually see the subdivisions we can switch on x-ray mode or we can toggle to the wireframe mode and just increase the levels till we get something that we like. I think a value of 4 is good enough and now I'm going to switch back to my solid view and then search for a delete geometry node and plug that in. Now again I don't want points to get deleted but I want faces to get deleted and this time I don't want only the faces to get deleted but I want everything that's connected to the face to get deleted as well. For the selection I'm going to search for a random value node and I'm going to change the type from float to boolean that we get the face to be either present or not. So if we plug it in this is what we get but I want much fewer faces to be present so I'm just going to increase the probability and bring it up to maybe something like 0 0.8 or 0 0.85 to get the type of selection that I want. Now these panels look fine but I want them to also be solid bricks and to do that we have to actually extrude the meshes so we can again shift these to the side and press shift a and search for an extrude mesh node and plug that in after the geometry. Now of course it's getting extruded way too much so we'll just decrease the extrude offset scale to something really low maybe a value of 0 0.05 is going to do good but the problem is that when we actually extrude it these faces are not present so we get holes in the geometry as you can see over here. In order to bring these faces back we can actually join the previous geometry with the extruded mesh. So we'll just take this joint geometry node press shift D and plug that in over here and then take the original geometry that is over here and plug that into the joint geometry and now it is covered on all sides. However one thing that you should note is that sometimes this might cause shading errors and that's because the normals are flipped. If you actually expand this and switch on back face culling you'll realize that these faces still disappear in many regions because they're not flipped properly. As you can see the face is disappearing over here and if you look over here the faces are disappearing as well and that is because the normals aren't flipped so we can press shift a and search for a flip faces node and plug that in over here and that way even with back face culling switched on all of the faces are seen which means our shading will be perfect no matter what we do. Now with that the last thing that we have to do is actually set material and remove the original pentagon because we don't require that anymore so we'll just remove that connection from there and press shift a and search for a set material node and plug that in before the last joint geometry. Now we'll change the material to the default material because it's not being used for anything else as of now. Lastly we still have this joint geometry kept because we want another instance of this cube present much larger outside to act as the background. So we'll press shift a and search for a transform geometry node and plug this geometry in here and plug it out into the last joint geometry. Now we'll just go ahead and scale it up on everything but the x-axis till we get something fairly large or maybe something like a value of 4 will do good for our animation. So with that we can actually set up our scene and then start the animation. For our scene setups we'll start off by switching on all of our defaults. So we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen based reflections. Then we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame can be 150 so that's a 5 second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format FFmpeg video with an encoding change from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptory lossless. Then we can select our camera over here and press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and then rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees again. Now I'm just going to grab it on the x-axis by minus 5 units so that it comes to the absolute start of our geometry node object which we can then select and press 
Alt D to create an instance of, and just press X 10 or minus 10 to move it to the edge of the previous instance. Now we can press Shift R to repeat the process and I'll do that maybe twice or thrice to just make it much longer. Now if we press 0 we go into our camera view and this is all right but before the animation I'm just going to select my camera, go to the camera properties, expand viewport display and increase passport out all the way to 1 while also going to the focal length and changing that down to 18 so that we get a much wider field of view. With this we can actually start off the animation after which we'll deal with the texture. So I'll just increase my timeline, select the camera, go back to frame 0 and then press I location and rotation after which I'll go to frame 150 and press G X 10 or in this case minus 10 so that we move front by 10 units which is the length of one single geometry node object that we had created and then I can press I location and rotation. Now if you actually play the animation you'll realize that it starts slow speeds up in the middle and then slows down again towards the end and that's because the interpolation is Bezier. To fix that we can hover down here and press T linear and that way we get a smooth looping animation. Now the problem is that if we just leave it as is it seems a little too boring for my liking but if I just rotate it on the x-axis by 360 degrees and then press I location and rotation T linear this animation has been done quite a few times before as well so I think it's also a bit repetitive and we need something that's a bit more complicated or nauseating when you look at it. So to do that I'm going to just expand this over here and expand the summary go down to the object transforms and for the Y rotation I'm just going to select it and press X to delete the keyframe select it shift D and bring it back. That essentially helps us undo what we just did previously. So we're back to having the linear animation. However we can take this Z value go down to frame 0 and just rotate it on the Z axis by some amount maybe minus 30 degrees and then press I location and rotation then select this node or this keyframe and press shift D and bring it to the other end and leave it as is. Then we can actually go to the last frame select the X rotation value press X to delete the keyframe and then just rotate it on the X axis by 360 degrees and then press I location and rotation. That way if you actually watch the animation this is what it looks like and I think this is a much cooler animation in one way or the other. So I'm going to leave the animation as is for now and start off with the actual texturing of the objects. So the first thing that I want to do is change from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and then select the default view and we have material present on it by default. Then I'm going to switch my viewport display from solid to render so that we can actually see what's happening when we actually apply the changes. So I'm going to keep the material very basic by increasing the metallicness all the way to 1 and then pressing shift A and searching for a Voronoi texture, changing it from Euclidean to Chebyshev so that we get square shapes then pressing shift A and searching for a color ramp so that we get more control and plugging the color into the factor. Now I'm going to also reduce the randomness all the way to 0 and increase the scale by 25 or something like that. We'll check that as soon as we connect it but I'll bring the black in and the white in and change this white value to a value of 0 0.8 and the black value from a value of 0 to a value of 0 0.2. Essentially the darker regions are going to be more shiny and the lighter regions are going to be more rough but I don't want it to be completely shiny in every, any region so I'm making it a bit lighter and I don't want it to be completely rough either. So I made it a bit darker. Now I'm going to plug the color into the roughness and you can start seeing these square shapes come up which is fine for what I want but I think I'm going to just increase the size a little bit more so I'll change it to 35 and that should be good enough for the actual material for the cubes that are present. Next I'm going to have to play with the lighting and the background. So to deal with the background the first thing that I'm going to do is change from object to world and change the background color from this grayish color down to a complete black after which I can press shift A and search for a volume scatter node and plug the volume into the volume. Now this volume scatter node is also going to help with the actual looping by hiding a few of the cubes that are present at the absolute edge. The next thing is that I don't want the density to be all the way at 1. Maybe a density of 0 0.2 is going to be good enough and that just looks really nice in my opinion. However we need to play around with the lighting now. So I'm going to go back to frame 0 press 0 to go out of my camera view and switch back to my object mode and switch on overlays so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. The first thing is I'm going to select my light press alt G to clear location and then press G X minus 5 so that it moves to about 10 units away from my camera. Then I'll press G Y 5 and then press shift D Y minus 10 so that I have one light to the right and one light to the left. Now I want these two lights to follow my camera but I don't want them to actually rotate along with the camera. To do that I'm going to select both my lights and parent them to a new empty which is going to have a constraint present on it. So the first thing that I want to do is select my light and press shift S cursor to select it so that I get the new empty present right where my camera is. So I can press shift A and search for an empty plane axis. Now I can go to the constraint properties over here for the empty 
and then add in a copy location constraint. And then for the target, I'll just select my camera. Now, as my camera moves, the empty moves along with my camera, as you can see. Now back on frame zero, I'm going to select both my lights, so light one and light zero zero one, and then select the empty. So make sure that the empty is the last thing that you select. If you're selecting it from the outliner, you have to press control and select. If you're selecting it from the viewport, you press shift and select. But essentially, the empty has to be the last thing selected and then press control P, set parent to object. So now if you actually watch the animation, the lights remain moving with the camera, but they don't rotate along with the camera. Now, if you press zero, you should get a perfectly seamless loop when you actually watch the animation. So we'll go back to my viewport shading of render and then I'll play around with the actual colors of the lights because I don't want them to just remain white, although this by itself looks really cool if that's what your main aim is. For my requirements, I'm going to select one of the lights. So let's start with lights and then go to the light properties over here and just change the color to a nice bluish color or a lemon greenish color like this. Then select my other light, which is light 001 and give that the bluish color that I was thinking of. Now, if you actually play the animation, this is what it looks like. And I think that looks really cool. And there's not much else that's left to do except for hitting render animation. Before you actually render it out, there's a few things that you should do, which is toggle between frame zero and frame 150 to make sure that there's absolutely no difference that can be seen at the absolute edge. If it's all there is any changes, then just add in a few more instances of this cube to the edge. So that is select this last edge, press Alt D X 10 again, and you should be good with that. Apart from that, you might also want depth of field or motion blur to be added in. To add in motion blur, you can go to the render properties, switch on motion blur, and just change the shutter down to something like 0.2 so that it doesn't get overboarded with the motion blur and to increase depth of field you can select the camera go to the camera properties and check depth of field then you can actually expand it and just turn on with the f-stop till you get the right amount of depth of field that you want so in my case i'm going to reduce f-stop to 0.8 and that looks pretty cool of course always make sure that you go to an arbitrary frame and just press render image first to actually see what comes up and if you like it well and good if you don't adjust your values accordingly and once you're happy with it press render animation with that you should get something that looks somewhat like like this and you can use it in any place or situation as you please. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video and remember that if you want these project files they are present on my Patreon along with the actual animations, wallpapers and many other perks here and there based on the tier that you select. I release videos every single day so be sure to check out other tutorials that are present on my channel because I'm sure you're gonna find something or the other to learn by watching these various tutorials. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, stay tuned by subscribing to my channel and stay creative.